welcome to Creating Your Career with Marla J. Alberti. Hope everyone's doing well. This is episode 20. I cannot believe we're on 20 episodes. And again, I am so super excited because I have my guest, Miss Marquita Delinda. Say hello to everybody, Marquita. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> So you, I like to tell the story of how I met the person. So really quick, how I met Marquita was we were a part of here in Jacksonville, Florida, Duval. We were a part of a association or group that helps business leaders and entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. So we actually went to the meeting and we went through the whole class. It's a wonderful class here in Jacksonville. And we went through it and and we just stayed in contact because, again, that's a part of networking, something I talk about a lot on the show. So let me jump right in and read her bio so we can understand how Marquita is creating her career. So we're going to talk about what she does. So Marquita Delinda loves the beauty industry. She it is her lifestyle and her passion. She was born and raised right here in Jacksonville, Florida, like me. It's not many of us left. <laughs> she is a licensed cosmetologist and something I did not know. She's a, mas a massage therapist as well. She's been a licensed cosmetologist for 18 years, and she's been a massage therapist for eight years. So we're, we're going to talk about that. Her specialties include, but they're definitely not limited to, kid styling, braiding, hair extensions, massages, facials, and many more areas. When she's not serving her clients and her guests, she's a wonderful wife and mother to two beautiful young ladies. She loves spending her time with family and friends, but she also considers herself to be reliable, honest, and she loves and believes in the fact of learning and continuing to grow in her industry. She wants to be the best in her industry and, and understand how to be that ideal hairstylist and massage therapist in her profession. So welcome, Marquita. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you, Marla, for having me on. I'm so excited and nervous at the same time. <laughs> No, it's okay. It's okay. That's yeah. what people like about the show. People like that it's nice and flowy and smooth. So nice. let's start there. Tell us about Marquita and and from your past, and you can go back as far as you want to, to a okay. little bit up to now. How did your story begin? Well, my story began actually right out of high school. Um, I was supposed to go to the military. That was my, my go-to. I was like, I'm going to the Navy. But then that sidetrack. I don't know how I got into hair. I wasn't the one who played with my cabbage packs and all that kind of stuff. Like girls say they play with their Barbies and all that. That wasn't me. I was not that girl. I was a little tomboyish. <laughs> but um, in 2004, I decided to go to cosmetology school. I had met so many people. That industry back then, it was easy. You could sit in the salon and somebody would walk in and it's nothing. But after 2008, um, when we you know our economy kind of went to a fall. I was pregnant. I had just got married. It was just like everything, you know, and I was only doing hair. And then something hit me in 2010, like, let me get another niche. So <laughs> I went to massage therapy. So this journey is really, really a hard industry, but the journey is fun. You learn and you keep just keep going and keep going and keep going. And your mindset keeps you going. Um, always faith. Faith is my biggest thing to um, fall back on. As I was going through school, I could not pass that state board to save my life. Um, I'm not a test taker. So I was introduced to this lady. Um, her name is Teresa. And she helped me tremendously. Like when I went back in there, I was ready. I aimed even higher scoring on my state board than normally anybody would. And after that, my career was just going. I was happy. And then I was like, okay, I can do this because I did this. So yeah, it's uh, this. And then now um, I'm a business owner completely. I have my own business. I just opened up this week. So it's like, yay. We're going to talk about that. I want to talk about that. So before before we get to the, because I saw the opening on Facebook. I was so excited. Oh my God. So we'll talk about that in a second. So I want to okay. get on a couple things you said there. So okay. I noticed you said, that is a hard industry. So you're saying the cosmetology, the massage industry. The what, every, why yeah, is the beauty. Mm -hmm. beauty. Okay, beauty industry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Why is this industry so hard? Why is it so saturated? And what do you have to do for those that are brand new out here trying to get into it? What do you have to do to stand out? What do you have to do to say, hey, I want to go to Marquita or I want to go to this person over here? Mm -hmm. So what, what did you have to do to get out there and stand out? Well, the, um, why I said the beauty industry is so hard cut in core because um, it's a lot of beauty professionals that don't like to share. I would say that 
Um, I'm a type of person that I like to share. I'll give you whatever I need because I can't do the same thing you can. You can't do the same thing I can. And I would tell anybody who's fresh out of school to try to go through commission-based salons first because when I went out, it was booth rent. I went straight to booth rent because that's all I knew. But with commission, you get the education that you need to step out and be like, okay, I can do this on my own. I already got a training. I can keep going. But get under a good mentor. Because mm-hmm. right? if they're not, if you don't go to a commission salon, you can still go to a booth rent. But let's get under a good mentor who's in the beauty industry who can lead you in the right direction that's what and, i would tell you and, and what were you saying if they don't go under commission what can they go under what was it called um booth renter like a booth renter oh, salon booth, booth renter okay booth mm-hmm. renter okay. yeah okay, so get you a mentor we talked about that here on the show yes. is get a mentor so it was Teresa your mentor she was and then i as i can collaborated and i just started following different stylists mm-hmm. i build a relationship with people who not even local they could be i have some who I come when with she's in South Carolina and now she just moved to Massachusetts so it's like you have that bond and they can just keep keep lifting you up over the phone text message just anything yeah yeah and I'm a firm believer in that, pushing one another, helping one another, because yeah. it's it's, it's going to always be a stranger, quote unquote, or a mentor that has what you need. The person that's sitting next to you may not have, but someone that you don't know that's going to have what you need to push you to that, mm-hmm. next, to that next level. So let's get into it. What led you? Okay, so you're, you're, you, how long did you do, how long did you do boo? rentals and commission how long did you do that how long did you do that before you said Let um, me I, okay yeah okay okay i was off and on actually um i was in a booth in a salon and then i would um work at um you know the salons inside walmart smart style yeah. i tried those um i worked at jc penny's so okay. i feel because i wanted that you know that when you're a boofer you have to pay your own way basically with education and education is always important to me so if i get under their wing i could learn still and still do my clients in my own setting by myself so yeah i did that for a good year and a half working with those different type of industries but roof rent i always done it and never ended so 18 years going and going strong so what said what made you decide to say okay hey let's jump i'm t- it's time for me to jump and open my own salon my own space. This is it. What made you decide to make that jump? It was meant to be. It was it was so nerve-wracking because I forgot to say, in the beginning, I would have salon after salon closed down because of finances. They didn't know how to do it. And it, I actually wanted to give up. I really did. I wanted to give up this industry. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm going to go back, go find me a job somewhere. But yes, <laughs> um, just, you know, and you learn from that. That's why I was like, okay, when I open up mine, it ain't going to be this, it ain't going to be that. I'm going to make sure I have my standards. And then when we took the class to you know the industry together the classes together it opened a whole new era for me and there's people just pushing me and telling me i can do it and that's the thing support systems just like you were saying mentoring and if you have somebody on your corner you can do anything and then stepping out on faith is, is i know it's hard but you can do it keep going yes yes yeah no i i totally agree and i want to backtrack a little bit i love how you said education mm-hmm. I, I i teach and preach and teach and preach that be weary of the person who is not educating themselves so if so if you want to get that mentor guys if you want to get into this field or any field find someone who's in the field and doing it but make sure they're educating themselves because you can't get to the point where you know everything right you 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 can't say well i know that already no you have to keep learning you have to keep studying and i love that so what's a part of your education now what do you still do to educate yourself in this industry of course we have to i'll go like i get in my car and i'll drive anywhere if i can drive for any type of education because i'm a stylist of all ethnic so i do everybody so i need to keep up with all the trends and everything with that absolutely coloring cutting hair extensions whatever is offered that i think i'll be interested in i'll go for it okay let me ask this so the brand new person that's coming in what are three necessary skills this brand new cosmetologist or this brand new beautician needs to have to come into the industry? What are three skills that they have to have to enter in? Okay, well, I guess I would call it a skill. You need to have an open mindset. Don't think you know everything because when you go in school, they're not teaching you everything that you're going to step out into. Mm-hmm. in your chair or behind you know but when you're behind your chair be knowledgeable know the book no state board you gotta know state board if you don't know state board then the people gonna feel like you don't know anything your clientele baby and then just love it enjoy it be passionate about it you got to because if you don't love what you do it's not gonna work 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. I, I'm a, I'm so glad you said that last because I'm a firm believer. If you don't love, if you don't love what you're doing, it's going to show. It's going. I I actually went through a coaching session not too long ago because I'm a coach, so I believe in having a coach. You right. need to have a coach. If if you are a coach, you need to have a coach. Okay. I'm not gonna say that again. All right. So I was talking to my coach the other day, and he said to me. I was talking about some things that I want to do. And he said, my voice raised when I started talking about something else, you know, and my voice went this way when I started talking about something else. So again, your passion has to come out. Even when you're doing the hair, I can tell I've been to a couple of stylists in the past where I could tell that they've been doing it so long. They were comfortable. They were mm-hmm. comfortable. They, the passion wasn't there. It was more than I've been doing it for 20 years. It's my job. now. I can tell mm-hmm. that the passion had kind of drained out of them, you know? Right. So, you know, you got to keep the passion going. Cause that's what, that's if you're motivated me being a client coming to you is what's going to make me motivate right exactly. so Absolutely. i want to talk to you about this this opening so what steps did you have to take to get your own space and open up because that, that is a huge jump like people go from booth to opening up their own location so you opened your own location congratulations on that so what Thank were the you. steps you had to take to open this location that is now your your spot you're no longer renting a booth you're, you're renting booths to other people Right. right. So how did, what what was that process like? How did you get into the door and open up your own booth? I mean, your own shop. I already had the steps to know what I need to take because I did my research. I'm a research person. Uh-huh. I don't step into something until I know everything I need and get my ducks in a row. But it was an easy transition for my clientele. And I thank the Lord for my clientele because everybody's followed me okay. as through my journey since 2004. So it was like. Thank you, Lord, you know, but um, just getting, you know, you have to get your business license and I already had that kind of stuff. All I needed to do really is to have my cosmetology salon license okay. and that's something you go through state board, but everything else was like, it was a breeze and just decorated it the way I want it, the way I want you to come. I want you to come in and you see this luxury, mm. just like high end and it ain't even that, but it's just the the feel of making you feeling good on the inside as well as the outside. Right. I love that. I've seen, I've, and I've watched on TV and stuff, I've seen where salons have it where you walk in and have, you get your warm, you first walk in, you you mm-hmm. have pillows and stuff. So I right. love the fact that you get to create and make it your own and, and do what you have to do. I love this. So what advice, so what advice would you give the newcomers coming in before we wrap up? Because I want to get to our fun question. But what mm-hmm. advice would you give this brand new person, whether they're 19, finishing high school or finishing college or whatever, or maybe the 30 year old or 40 year old, or 50 year old who wants to make a career change and say, Hey, I want to do hair. What, what advice would you give them to start off? Mm, I would tell them if it's you really, if you really, really want it, you can do anything. It don't matter if it's hair, you want to be a, you want to be a coach, you want to teach or anything. Just, Go with your heart. Go mm-hmm. go in and, and go hard. Just keep, because you have your ups and downs, but that makes you stronger. Just keep going and never give up. You got to, because it's your passion. You're going to love it until the end. And I'm glad you said that. That goes back to something that reminded me that you said, because mm-hmm. you said that you didn't, you said you wanted to give up. Mm-hmm. What made you stay in? Was it that? What, what made you not give up? So I, I, no, I get it. I, I trust me. There's... There's been many times, many times, I can count more than on my hand, my fingers, that I want to give up, like, just bump it. This is this is ridiculous. What made you keep going? It was my why. Um, I have mm-hmm. learned through time, through a lot of other network that I'm in, a lot of, you know, my side, mm-hmm. side um, hustles or whatnot, they always come with <laughs> what's your why. Mm-hmm. And that's a big part. My why is my kids. Oh. Um, my girls are my heart. So if I want better for them, I'm going to do whatever I can. So always think about that. What's your why? Your why should make you cry. Your your why should make you feel happy at the same time. So yeah, always think about that too. Just, just sit back and meditate on that. What's my why? What can I better myself at? What can I do to get where I want to be at? And everything will just fall into play. Oh, I, I love that. Thank you so much for saying that, Marquita, because... Yeah. I'm big on the why. That, that's why I started this talk show. I didn't have all the bells and whistles. I still don't have the bells and whistles, but I believe the content is so rich because I firmly believe that if there's, if not, not everybody, but if there's something inside of you that you want to do, I believe you can do it. But I have had to learn the lesson that I can't believe 
more in that person than they believe in themselves. So that's where you have to, all I can do is put it out there. Like what they say is you can lead the horse to the war, but you can't make them drink it. So I figure I could put the information out there for free on YouTube. People can watch and figure out how are other people creating their careers and they're doing it. They're actually doing it. You don't have to be a gazillionaire to go out there and make change and make difference. You know, now if you right. if you're climbing on the, in that direction, great. That, that and we should be. You should be climbing income wise every year. I mean, I don't right. think anyone's dropping income, but hey, I don't know. But <laughs> but you should be climbing in a certain direction every year, and that should be able to help you as well as if you, the more and more you're helped, the more and more people you can help. So I mm-hmm. love that. So let me sum it up so we can get to our fun question. So Mm -hmm. we have learned today, keep an open mindset. Make sure you know your, know your industry, know what the state board needs, know your skills, know your why, understand Mm -hmm. other people, get with other people, mentor with other people. Don't try to be the know-it-all. Take your time and be slow with it. I love the quote, Kevin Hart said it, and I think another person said it, overnight success takes 20 years. Right. Right. So you've been in this thing 18 years, you're massage therapy eight years and you're still grinding. You're still doing it. So you cannot give up. I think that is a theme of a lot of my um, talk of a lot of my shows is Mm -hmm. you can't give up. So you got to keep going. So I want to thank you so much for this, Marquita. So let's get to our fun question. So the fun question is, can you tell us something legally (laughs) that you can share? (laughs) Tell us something that the world may not know about Marquita Delinda that you can legally share. (laughs) Um, well, so funny. Um, I'm actually a, a clown. Um, I'm really silly. Um, I love to have fun. I'm a kid. I'm a big kid at heart. Like yeah. truly. And people don't know they take me so serious, but I'm really a nut. I am too silly. I, I like. To, I like to make you know just be silly. Just be yourself. I love to laugh. So that's you know I'm I'm really goofy. I'm really goofy. I am. <laughs> I'm the same way too. I can those who really, 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 truly know me. Right. Believe it or not, it's not many people who really, really, truly know me. Uh, it, it is a few, but not not many. And they they know who they are. Um, I, I am too. I'm a nut. I like to be funny. I like to be silly. You know, I, I like to have fun. You know, mm-hmm. yes, I'm about business, and yes, I'm about goals and making yes. it happen. But I love to just be silly. I love to sit in the yeah. style on the floor and act silly sometimes. You know, it's okay. Yes. Don't take life so seriously. <laughs> Seriously, exactly. you know, I like to stay away from mess because me- I'm allergic to mess. So if I see mess, I run. But I, right. I, totally, I totally, totally understand that, Marquita. Well, tell the world, and I will have links down below. Tell the world, how can they get in contact with you, Marquita Delinda? How can they find you if they're here in Jacksonville and want to get their mm-hmm. hair done? Or you travel to different mm-hmm. places, like you said, you love to get in your car and go. How can they re- get in contact with you? Um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and my my website is MD Hair Studio. So everything okay. is the same. Yeah, I got everything linked the same, so you don't have to search for me. Um, exactly. But I totally thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity. This was great. This was awesome. I learned quite a bit myself. Uh, again, I, the hair industry is, I, I go to get my hair done. I, I know nothing about the hair so I'm learning. Mm-hmm. I think you're like the, I don't know, maybe the second or third mm-hmm. hair professional beauty, beautician I've had on here. And I'm going to have, I have a few more lined up too. And I love learning because it's such a huge industry. I love learning. About it it. So I thank you so much. Guys, her information, all the links she just said, we're going to have those linked down below. If you want to get in contact with her, please do not hesitate to get in contact with her. Come down to Jacksonville, go to her salon, get into mm-hmm. that experience of feeling luxury when you walk into her salon and reach out to us. If you want to be interviewed, feel free to contact me at contact at truespeechcoaching.com. It will be down below. Please, 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 if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell there for notifications, guys. And we will see you guys next month for episode 21, where I have another awesome guest lined up. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.